Hi, I'm Kaherman, back again. Uh, in today's video, I want to talk about confidence. Again, uh, if you've seen earlier videos, you know I've talked about this topic before. But today I want to come at it from a different angle. And it's actually in response to a question I received following the video I posted in, this, uh, in the group about uh, what happens when a client doesn't like what I made for her. And um, the question was, well, I, I paraphrase, uh, something that, well, if something happens in our lives, you know, we sometimes lose our confidence. And all of a sudden, we feel we can't really do what we used to do, what we used to do easily. And the question was really like, how can we get out of that? How can we get our sewing mojo back in that case? And um, yeah, I was, I, I was thinking about that because in my previous video, I was saying that um, Confidence basically is highly overrated and I still think that's true um, Basically saying that you can do a really great job even if you're not really all that confident um, And the other way around so they're not Confidence doesn't equal success or doesn't necessarily lead to success and lack of confidence doesn't mean you won't be successful So that's in that sense. It's highly overrated. We all enjoy things more when we're confident and that sense of not being sure whether we can pull it off um, isn't something we like to experience because we always think it tells us something about our capability uh, and the chances of success you know doing what we want to what we set out to do and um, so sometimes something can happen you know that's got nothing to do I mean it may have something to do with our work like say I can totally screw up an order and um, and the client comes down on me and <laughs> tells me and says all sorts of things and and that leaves me with like oh you know now how am I gonna keep working and now that I think of it actually it has happened to me it actually has happened I I actually when I clicked record I did not think of that and that's really quite funny given the topic um, yeah let me tell you the story it's actually it was my second big group order and it was in 2005 and uh, I the first one I ever did was like really exhausting you know I had taken it on I knew I had no idea how long things were going to take and I had no experience I didn't know how these things worked and so I thought okay you know I'm going to finish that order on in the last week of, of May and then the first week of June I, I start with the other group and then I've got plenty of time didn't count in that the first group ended up adding more stuff and now we have to alter this and now there was also another skirt here so there was basically way more work going on I didn't finish it when I thought I would and um, the new group it was also taking longer because uh, then I had to adapt to their schedule basically in the end I worked through like yeah I don't know three days and two nights before with the domestic machines and the threads would be breaking and I was like you know absolutely and but I ma I managed to finish it all and I actually and it was sort of on the third day after not having slept for two nights and I had to drive like four hours drive to deliver the dresses and so and I, I delivered the dresses I handed over these dresses and I was like you know the sense of relief and the dresses I mean everything sort of you know they looked really nice and and so I was happy and I actually saw the performance I was in the theater that night and uh, so I saw the performance I heard people you know like oh wow the you know the costumes are really pretty and and so you know I basically and the performance finishes I get this phone call really genuinely expecting <laughs> to to uh, you know to, to hear a big thank you and um, and the guy is just like tearing me apart you know how dare I deliver this piece of shit and and you know basically he was coming down on me in a way that I totally didn't expect. He never paid me the part that was still outstanding. I haven't spoken to the guy since. And so, yeah, so that was like really, that was 
pretty much the first, the second big order I did, you know. And yeah, I was really shaken. I was really shaken. I was like, oh, now that was kind of, there we go. That was my sewing business. There goes my sewing. That's what I thought. Like, I thought, there goes my sewing business. Who, I mean, Granada is a small place, you know. It's it's like, I thought, who is going to order anything after that? And, and you know, and then everybody was going to talk about it. And so, ev like, tomorrow, everybody's going to know. And I didn't even know what was supposedly wrong with these dresses. But, um, um, I mean, then who cares? And I also thought, like, if he started bad-mouthing me, and then I remembered when we even were in the car fabric shopping together, I remembered him really bad-mouthing some other dressmaker that he'd worked with. And uh, so I thought, oh, okay, so that's apparently his trick. But, um, so, yeah, that really left me with that. So I don't know whether I can, how am I going to, you know, keep going from here. And then another order came in and I was like, all right, then like, let's do this. And next client goes, oh, I love it. I love it. And, and so over time, I just sort of forgot about it. I mean, so much forgot about it that I didn't even think of it when I decided to record this video. So that was quite funny. Um, but yeah, so it was really, I didn't really do anything to make that lack of confidence go away. It was really, I didn't have another job, you know, it wasn't that I kind of had another job in Spain. And so I was like, okay, you know, if somebody else orders something and apparently he didn't go around tell everybody, or at least whoever he told, they didn't really care much about it because it apparently quite obviously hasn't really impacted um, the way my business went. And... Um, yeah, so in the end, it was just with every order that came, I thought less about it. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, so he wasn't happy. And I don't know, there were probably things I could have done better. And, uh, but then, you know, I had no experience. He knew that. And probably that's why. And uh, I charged very little. And so that was also one of those experiences. They don't buy your slack at all. Uh, low prices don't buy your slack. And... So, yeah, the confidence sort of somehow slowly came back. But the point I want to make really is that confidence doesn't really have anything to do with whatever event happens in our lives. It reminds me a bit of, of uh, how money worries have nothing to do with the amount of money you've got in your bank account. Like there's um there's a book uh, there's a book by Bruce Lipton who uh, that talks about the connection between um, our minds and memory and our body and one of the stories he tells is how Will Smith uh, apparently wakes up every morning kind of freaked out about money and I don't know if you're anything like me you're like what you <laughs> know what what on earth are you going to be worrying about, you know, the amounts of money you've got in your bank account? But then apparently the story goes when he was really young, he started off as a musician and he made a lot of money really quickly and then had a really bad accountant and uh, the tax man took it all away overnight. So he's got like a residue kind of memory sitting there that um, is today the day I lose it all. And I've heard that from, you know, other other and other stories and stuff. So that, that people have a lot of money quite quite often still think it's not enough or or they're worried that they lose it all. And then on the other end, of the other extreme, I, w I remember the uh, when I, I went on a on a trip to Peru and it was sort of an offline like, like off the beaten track kind of trip where we were looking for transport, you know, we had an itinerary, we knew which places we were going to visit, but, but it wasn't clear how we we're going to get there. So it was like catch a bus or, 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 from, or find a car, someone who takes you there. And so we were going to go from one place to another. And it was either New Year's Eve or Christmas Day or something like that. And so our tour guide, he said, okay, I'm going to go and try and find a car. And he couldn't find one. And we're like, what? Because the, the amount of money we were, and it was, both, it was for the driver, it was going to be a four hour drive to take us to the place. And then he obviously had to go back 
So for him, it was like an eight-hour day, and um, and nobody was interested. And we knew these people would basically in a day earn sort of enough to have food for tomorrow. You know, and we, you know, the whole budget, the way this was organized, what it was planned, was basically we were going to pay the guy uh, so that he wouldn't have had to wait to work the entire week, the entire following week. They were not interested. Like, the fact that he had no more money than to buy food for tomorrow, if he was lucky, that was just was not a deal. There was just nothing to stress over. And so he was, like, and and it wasn't just one guy. It was basically ten guys before we finally found one. And so ten guys, basically, people didn't care. It was just not something to stress out over. If you If you have something... If you may get some food tomorrow, that's cool. What well, more do you want? And I won't ruin my Christmas day if um, if that means, you know, even if that means I'll, I'll get money, like way more money than I usually, usually make. So, like these examples make it really clear the amount of money is, is just has nothing to do with any feelings of worry you may have. And... I am my point and I'm arguing that confidence is the same. Confidence is is a sense of, of insecurity, of mm, not sure, doubt, not sure whether I'm up to the task. And that's a thought, just like any other thought. It's fl fleeting, it's flowing through, it's coming and going. And it, it may look as if it's got something to do with whatever the event is. And, but it doesn't, like, things can go perfectly fine in your life and you have moments of, of not sure I'm, whether I'm up for it. You know, I've heard Marie Folio say that, that she was, she has moments of insecurity, of doubt, of, I don't know whether I, I can do that. And you're like, what? You know, my mentor, Jamie Smart, he says, oh, well, sometimes I get up in the morning and I feel really, like, insecure. I really, I'm like, not confident I can really do what I set out to do and so yeah one point is we all go through that um, the second one is I question whether any event is really the cause of it say sometimes there can be events like say if you go through a divorce you know or or, or on the other hand if you're just freshly in love you're preoccupied your mind is elsewhere so maybe chances are you make more mistakes or you're not as concentrated or maybe um, I remember <laughs> once making a pair of trousers and looking for fabric to make the pockets and so I cut the pockets and all of a sudden where are my front legs and I'd actually cut off I'd cut I'd use the front legs I'd cut out to to make the pockets so you know fortunately there was more fabric but yeah so you kind of your mind is elsewhere you're preoccupied and so I think the temptation to think that whatever the event is, is what took away your confidence. I think it's really tempting, but I don't think it's true, which is good news because that means even though, you know, maybe you're, you're dealing with your divorce, but then if, if you think that this divorce is taking away your confidence, then it's a because the divorce you can't undo the divorce or whatever the thing is that happened so if you think that that's got something to do with your sense of confidence then then you're in trouble because you can't undo this so now you think oh i'm gonna how am i gonna get? then the question becomes how am i gonna uh, get my confidence back how i can i sort of undo what happened but when you realize that what happened doesn't take away is not what takes away your confidence it's you've got insecure th thoughts and you're under no obligation to to hang on to them and they also they don't they don't indicate anything and ha i mean have you ever felt insecure and then are like not confident and then you had to do something anyway because the client was waiting or maybe it's in a different context and you had to do it anyway and you went just fine like you don't need to be confident 
Or on the other, on the other, the other example is, is like my story. I was, I was super confident, you know, and then I just got this ice cold bucket of, of water, you know, thrown in my face. So like, and I was super confident when I picked up the phone, I was convinced the guy was con going to congratulate me and say, thank you, <laughs> you know, and pay me extra. And I so totally, so confidence doesn't, it's, it's a, a momentary feeling that comes and goes, no matter, regardless of how things are actually going. And it doesn't indicate anything about your capabilities. And, um, and it's definitely not caused by whatever event that looks like that's caused it. So, yeah, so it's, it's really good news from all angles. And I think the first thing to do is, is to be kind to yourself. And so if something happened in your life that leaves you preoccupied and worried and maybe this grief, you know, then, yeah, that, that's just that. And so maybe, yeah, you're not feeling confident. That's cool. That's cool. You know, there's nothing you need to do. There's nothing you need to improve. You're perfect, just the way you are. I'm getting all emotional now, so I'm going to leave you there. And I hope, I hope this is helpful. And, yeah, you're definitely not alone. I think everybody, everybody has moments where we're confident and others where we're not and so just know you're not alone and um, you'll be fine. I'll talk to you again soon. <laughs>